Hi, welcome to You Old and Retro. Uh, my name is Vincent, and welcome to another video. And today I'll be doing a video on the game called uh, Gladiator Bots, which I think is a portmanteau of gladiators and obviously robots. Uh, the premise behind this game is uh, about programming the AI, uh, artificial intelligence of each robot. Uh, and then having them do um, a series of different actions uh, and different um, condition conditions to uh, hit, off the, uh, hit the objective each time. Um, basically, uh, with each, uh, with the actual basic training, what it teaches you is basic programming of uh, what, what it does. Uh, so I did a bit of, when I first downloaded this game, I did a little the basic training already. Uh, the basic approach is all about um, so I'll just get the volume down a little bit because it is a little bit loud for me. Uh, that's better. Right. Um, the basic premise is basically I'll show you the introduction is you have these robots and each one has a series of actions. So the first thing you'll do is obviously the tutorial normally anyway. So I'll just show you quickly the introduction. Uh, welcome to Gladiator Bots, the ultimate robot fighting competition. The rules simple. It's match your team blue, so this team here. And then you just defeat the enemy red. Uh, alternatively, uh, there are games uh, where you have objectives such as picking up uh, an item and taking it back to your base or catching a flag style, um, capturing bases basically. Uh, for a month of time, winning the points from that. So as you can see, they move forward and they attack. These robots are autonomous, you can control them manually, so I can't, for example, click on one and then obviously click something else and then get them to move somewhere. Uh, what happens is when you click on a robot, it brings up the AI um, conditions of robot. Um, now before I explain this, um, what you need to remember is it will repeat these actions over and over again. And what what you can liken it is is making uh, a hot drink, for example. Um, if the first condition is you check the fridge for milk, and then the second action is you boil water, and then what and then what will happen is once the water is boiled, you then pour the water into a cup, and then you add a tea bag, and then you add the milk, for example. Now, after those actions, the first action you'll come across is, is, is what is basically called a condition. Do you have any milk in the fridge in the first place? And then there's an action leading off that if you don't have any, and there's a leading, and then if you don't have any milk, basically, you go to the shop to get some. So that's the first condition. You can't fulfill any other condition once that's, so that one is fulfilled, basically. So. Once you've brought the milk and you've taken it back home and put it in the fridge, these actions will repeat basically. As you can see from this bar down here, it keeps flowing through. So your first condition was um, to check milk for example. And it checks the milk and you've got the milk. You then can move to the next action or the next check action basically. So rather, you didn't fulfill the, the milk being empty. You go to the next action, and your next action would have been to boil water. And then, obviously, to boil water, you need to be to have some water in the, in the actual kettle in the first place. So, you, what will happen is, if there's water in the kettle, then you can boil the water, shall we say? And then, once you've boiled the water, you move on to the next step, which is to look at. Uh, moving to the next step, which will be pouring the water into a cup or putting a tea bag and then brewing the tea. So that this is a series of steps of actions uh, which basically are conditioned as well. Now in this game, much like you're making a cup of tea, you're checking the AI. We took the AI of this first. You can see it explains it very clearly that you have conditions which are ovals and actions which are rectangles. This oval here is if myself is an empty shield, like I said, empty cup of milk, you run away. So in this case, you've gone to the shop to get it, basically. So you run away out of the range, basically, until that milk or 
in this case the shield is refilled that's how I'm explaining it basically it's like making a brew and then if it's not empty however you can move to the next step and then it will says attack the closest enemy bot so in my case I was saying I was boiling water if there was water inside the, the basically the kettle for example in this case if there is water in the kettle if it's in range for example so uh, uh, what it's explaining is here is it's attack the closest enemy robot whichever is in range and then it will attack it if it's only in range basically and then once that's done it will go move to the closest enemy robots so this bar will constantly keep flowing through and going is the shield empty if yes move run away and then that's the first action it will not do these two actions if this is fulfilled and then if this is not fulfilled because obviously the shield is not empty it doesn't have to check that anymore it goes to the next step it will then attack and as long as it can attack that's 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 the action that's fulfilled and it won't do this next step because it's attacking so as it's attacking this action is the one that's being fulfilled and it's constantly going filling the bar and it's constantly going checking attack 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 and then once the enemy is killed however and there's no other enemy in range it will then move to the next closest will be bot and then you can obviously program a, a bot to do different actions uh, depending on the situation or the type of weapon that you have for example you might have a weapon which allows you to shoot from a very long range um, so what you might realize that moving to closest near enemy bot is not really usable uh, and you might have enemies which run away uh, so you might want to continuously attack them and then only run away if your shield is down for example and that, that's literally how the whole game uh, works through because you are literally as you can see here it's got an action here which is scrolling through the bars and it's literally going through each one and going can't do this yes or no can't do this yes or no can't do this yes or no and if it reaches any of those actions where it says yes i can do this it will do that until it's fulfilled that that's what it says it's searching for the first follows branch so it follows can't do this and it follows that down can't do this and it calls follows this down and does it until it actually is actually finished and then the complexity however starts when you have different game types and the AI is tougher or stronger uh, and it's definitely what I've been doing playing through this anyway is I found it's actually starts off very initially very uh, simple for example it's playing play resume and you show your bots fighting each other and they, you see this one this one runs away when it's got less low shield so this one once you see the shield going down it runs away the shield refills and it goes back forward again and then attacks again and that's that's how you generally win because you have a bot which can move back and forth doing that obviously that sort of um, might not work because you might be two against three for example or you have a continuously respawning set of enemies depending on what happens so I'll show you is a very quick game of the first level which I find is actually the best representation of a simple um, setup um, you actually start off with some pre-programmed robots for example here because that's literally how it would work because you'd have a different set of what, what it gives you the game gives you is a starter kit which is a very basic set of instructions that you can obviously fiddle around with and then what will happen is with, with that retreat attack it will do those actions first and then so obviously in this retreat is retreating if myself is empty and then flee from the closest enemy bot so this this little starter kit is a pre-programmed module that you can put, put into your um, your game so you can pre-program a lot of these so you don't have to faff around with putting modules and more modules behind it and more modules behind that uh, without necessity which is really really handy because um, obviously you can use these as basic attack and retreat functions and then in this particular case it helps you pre-program a few things such as collecting uh, the resource so if it's collecting a resource 
take it to the nearest enemy base, uh, ally base basically, but only if it's carrying a resource. So it, it retreats first to make sure that it's not going to die, and if it's, then if it's carrying uh, any resources, it will do so, and then attack anything, and then the least important thing obviously is actually picking up a resource here and then moving towards an enemy robot. So if no resources are available, it will move towards an enemy robot. So I'll just very quickly show you how, it's, how it works. Uh, so this is a pre-programmed set of robots and obviously the opponent will have its own AI as well, doing very similar things. So if I'm ready this, so as you can see, the first initial nodule it hits is it's checking the resource. It's constantly fluffing this out. It's hit the point where you can see it's it's going towards the resource first, but then it reaches the attack function because it obviously can't pick it up yet. And obviously it's a finished attacking that uh, thing which can carry it, but then it's also reached the range of this. So yeah, you've got two things in the same range. Shoot that. Then it defeats this as well. And then it picks up the resource without minimal loss. As you can see, this is a respawning uh, area. Um, so the other robot, which no longer has uh, anything to pick up, is fighting and retreating action, and obviously constantly fighting against uh, these two robots. But obviously, the other robot is moving slowly because it's carrying the item. Uh, as you can see, I'll win, and it's, there you go. I don't want to set up an account. That's, that is the basic premise of the game. Um, you also have domination, uh, which is holding the bases. Uh, with this, you are basically um, it's capture the flag style. Now I'm not only showing you the level one of each of the games, um, but I'm going to tell you, seriously tell you now that these are probably going to be um, how should I say it? It gets more complex, so I've I think that the, the more uh, higher levels where you get more robots, uh, and you'd have to assign specific ones to pick up uh, resources in advance, uh, and then you're holding uh, vanguard actions. So there's a lot of strategy involved in this. And it seems while it seems very simple, um, what I really find is actually really interesting is that this game is actually it's about it is essentially show, showing you how programming works. Um, if you look at a website or any program, it's actually a list of if actions. Um, so if you do this, something else happens, and then it's it's causality basically. Um, you've got much like you have one thing affecting another. Uh, that's essentially how this game all works, and that's how it essentially AI works. If you look at um, AI robots uh, right now, um, they are responding to your facial actions. You're smiling. You're putting your hand out and it's shaking it. Those are all things that you're doing, and it's responding in advance. Or if it's, and even if something as much as basic as it responding and seeing you walking up to it, it will respond because you have come into its its range, and then it's programmed to actually pick up those uh, cues that if someone walks into its space or its range, um, it will, for example, extend a greeting. Oh, that's how all sent all why all a lot of robots and other things it seems to sense robe um, have have the sensors and other stuff. Even stuff like Alexa, that's responding to your voice uh, and it's picking up the nuances in your voice and different uh, vocal uh, words. And it's pre-programmed to pick up and say, play some music, and it will play music. Um, so all in all, this is actually. Um, it's a very simple game, deceptively, but um, it's also an incredibly great, greatly complex game at the same time. It, it's, it seems uh, very simple, but it's not, uh, if that makes any sense. You are essentially playing and running around, basically, programming little robots and then to take over against each other, and at the same time, you are learning uh, little aspects of causality, basically, of um, one action affecting another and it is essentially actually quite a really nice game 
Uh, very simple, very lightweight. Uh, I think it's less than 200 meg this game. And it runs with the Unity platform, so all in all, uh, you could probably play this on a really light low end laptop and I think it would still run really really well. Um, so definitely worth checking out. So this is uh, Gladia Boss and my name is Vincent. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you later.